Welcome, Greek U Nation, to episode number 509 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Ayalon, CEO of Greek University. I'm a speaker and an author. Our fifth book just came out. It's called Perseverance and How to Be a Great Fraternity or Sorority Alumnus. So go and pick up that book on Amazon or Barnes & Noble today. We call these episodes the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring college students together. So fun fact, Gen Z wants to make the world a better place. So when you're thinking about the events that you want to put on on your college campus, whether it be a brotherhood or a sisterhood event, or even recruitment events to recruit new students into your organization, I want you to ask yourself, what are we doing that is going to make the world a better place? You see what's happening in our country because of climate change. You see it with your own eyes. So let's work together to make this world a better place. And it starts in your own local community. Let's talk to our next guest, Marisha Wojcicowska is an international consultant, author, and a mother of a true global citizen. She has traveled to over 30 countries and she's lived in Montreal, New York, my favorite city, New York, Paris, Tokyo, and Bangkok. Her work in water policy for the United Nations and global experiences have inspired her seven book series, amazing. Air France even invited her in 2022 to create special editions of the book with exclusive book signings at the airports in Paris. Amazing. Welcome to the show, Marisha. Oh, Michael, I'm so honored to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's my pleasure. I love, you know, the international flair that you bring to our program. I think that's really important for the college students to see it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But you decided to go to school at McGill University, which is in Montreal, Canada. Why did you decide that McGill was the right choice for you? Yeah, so that came from like nothing to do with academics. <laughs> it had all to do with the fact that my parents were both university professors. They were both, my mom was a professor at U of T, University of Toronto, and my dad at Ottawa University, University of Ottawa. So where did I want to go? None of those universities. <laughs> That's how I chose McGill. <laughs> It was far away from the other two experiences. All right, I got it, I got it, all right. And you know, you kind of, you had this working dream in that you were actually working for the United Nations. I, and I gotta tell you, you know, a lot of the students that uh, really like that international component, they would love to work at the United Nations. What was it like working there? So well, actually I'm a consultant on water policy and uh, and so and I still do mandates. I still have assignments with the, the UN and I've had assignments now for over 20 years with the UN, UN and other international organization. I have a lot of international clients among them the UN and it's just amazing. It really is because it's 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 like the the the, the world's biggest policy stage, right? So it's it's I mean there's it's intense. It's inspiring. It, it it's 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 oh, and it's also challenging, right? Because because the problems are 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 what they are, and they're massive. And you want to get things done. And even within the UN, if it's it's it is challenging. So, but I would not have changed. And you know, when I started off as a college student and did a master's, I did my first master's degree in 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 um, environment environmental science and then my second master's degree in international development I really my dream was to work at the UN so I've I've, I've been so privileged to be able to to do that <laughs> you're very lucky I tell you you you've lived a wonderful life uh, you didn't get cheated out of anything which is great I mean you traveled across the globe with your family so far you've lived in Canada France, Japan, the United States, Thailand, and still accounting. So why is travel so important for the college students who are listening to you right now? Yeah, and I have to tell you, I am right now, I'm in Bangkok in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> and my son's studying in second year university in Tokyo. So I mean, for me, travel, travel is really, it's like your university textbook comes to life right it, it, it takes you beyond your comfort zone gives you real world experience and teaches you lessons that you can't learn in a classroom it opens your mind it makes you adaptable and more tolerant and flexible and i believe those are qualities and, and tools and mindset a mindset that you need to develop in this interconnected world you know our kids are are uh, the world is connected like never before in split second and you need to be able to build bridges and understand and connect with the world. And for, for that to happen, you know, 
it, it really matters to, to know about the world and to care for the world and to love the world. I mean, the world is a fascinating place and I encourage students, if they can, to travel. But even if you can't travel, if you can't step onto a plane, the world is all around you. In all of our communities in North America, the world is there. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that I regret about my own college experience. I did not do study abroad. And I think that was a big mistake. I think to every college student listening, get that international experience, go do study abroad for a semester, for a year, whatever it is. I'm encouraging my daughter to do it. She's going to do study abroad in Paris. I mean, it's so, so important that you get that experience. It's critical. So if I had a do-over, that would be the one thing I would change about my life is I would have done study abroad. It was a big mistake. I did spend a lot of time you know, in college um, and as a child in Israel, and, and I had a fantastic experience there. So I'm grateful for it. But there were study abroad experiences that I could have done, and and I didn't take advantage of it. And I feel like that was a missed opportunity for me. So I just want to be, you know, open about that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I totally agree, Michael. And I would add, you know, uh, that you build amazing networks, right? Mm -hmm. You do build networks uh, abroad. That's how you start building your networks when you're young. And so let's be honest, you get great Instagram shots also outside. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I tell you what, I'm jealous that you're in Thailand right now because the food, oh my God, the food is so good in Thailand. I could eat there forever and I wouldn't miss anything in the United States. I would be totally happy. Um, oh. <laughs> but anyway, now, you know, I think I want to talk to you about something interesting because you're kind of an expert in this area. You know, manners, right? This is something that can be kind of challenging in the United States. What do parents and other countries what do they teach their kids about manners well here's the thing you know it, it, I, and i'm canadian so i i you know it, when you learn <laughs> well abroad i mean in france in japan in thailand which are the, the some you know the countries that i in, that i know best outside of north america mm -hmm. those countries manners are really really important actually they're they're, they're they, they they make or break they get you in the door or out the door like this right in split second so it, for instance in france it's super important to 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 be and to get up when when someone walks into the room and to say bonjour you kiss on the cheek it's uh and it's it's and you say goodbye properly and and you get up when pe and you accompany people to the door when they get you, when they leave mm -hmm. in japan politeness is a deeply cultural thing it's, it's very different you know you greet people by bowing don't touch you don't touch people in japan right you don't you never touch you don't cross your legs when you're sitting you don't even ladies i mean that's considered informal and uh and, and, and impolite you don't cross your legs you it, it's so it's 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 respecting the personal space is really important in japan and um in in thailand it's all about sanu. it's all about making every interaction enjoyable harmonious you greet by 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 with with the why saying sawadika sabai mai are you okay? how's how's your day <laughs> so so the, the 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 manners are very different from one country to the other in japan i'll tell you also i mean it's very it always you know it's very surprising to us foreigners for instance when you're eating in japan it's it's really <laughs> okay to slurp your noodles and make noise while you slurp your soup which is something i've been going to japan for 25 years my my son is is, is half japanese i'm still not used to that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's totally wild that would drive my wife crazy she hates hearing that sound of like slurping it drives her crazy so i don't even know if she would ever be able to live in japan because that's like considered the norm like you're expected to do this you know, so yeah, it's so interesting, fascinating to me. And, you know, I think about how people greet each other in France with the bonjour, and then you're basically kissing both sides of the cheek. You know, it's so different, like in the United States. I mean, in the United States, there's literally a term for leaving a party without saying goodbye to anybody. They call it ghosting. And you just walk out of the party and you don't even say goodbye to anybody. So talk about the differences between France and the United States. I mean, it couldn't be more different. Yeah. And table manners in France, you know, I was, my father was Polish, so he was, and he was old Europe. My father was born in 1925. And he, he, I mean, table manners were 
so important at home, you know, the way you put your, 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 your fork and spoon down, the way you, you don't make noise when you, when you chew, you close your mouth when you chew. I mean, those things are they're deeply cultural, right? And showing respect when you're traveling, just those little things, if you've studied them a little bit before leaving and, 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 and are mindful of them, that, that builds bridge and trust so quickly it's such an easy thing to do and it shows respect and it shows that and it it, it, it builds a bridge right 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 away right to to, to have a uh, uh, more meaningful interaction with 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 the local yeah you got to study those things i think before you travel abroad that's really important uh climate change is certainly a big issue for us and gen z is very concerned about it there are constant weather related natural disasters you've seen it happening in the United States right now, whether you're talking about Florida or North Carolina. I mean, it's been one thing after another. I mean, it seems like every year it gets worse. So how are other countries like Japan and Singapore, how are they preparing for climate change? Yeah, and I mean, we've been having out in Asia also extreme weather events. Thailand is still flooded in the north, for instance. So in, in Japan, of course, Japan is super advanced, right? And mm -hmm. in, in especially, I mean, on everything, infrastructure, engineering, and in early warning systems for, for you know, they have the, I lived in Japan for seven years, and, and, and they, even I was there <laughs> at New Year's last year, and there was a birth, big earthquake out in, um, on, the, on, on the western coast, so on the other side of, uh, 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 from Tokyo, and I mean, on the eastern coast. And then the and and we were walking outside and our phones all of our phones rang all of our phones rang even though we're i'm you know my sim card is a foreign sim card mm -hmm. and all of our phones started going zip 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 earthquake warning and so the early warning systems in japan are phenomenal um there and japan for instance tokyo is has built huge massive storage tunnels under the city in order to cap, you know, excessive rainwater. Singapore, Singapore is a small island nation, right? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an island, it's, an, it's tiny. And so, but they've mastered water management and I can go, I, and yeah, we're not going to go into this now, but they've, they've done a lot of work to secure water, freshwater reserves for themselves. One of them is, is a huge, um, Marina Bay Barrage, it's called, and they and it's a, like a huge lake, man-made lake. They built it, and 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 that stores water. They're also looking at the 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 modeling of of, of expected um, storm surge and sea level rise, and there's they're 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 refining those models in order to see at their level, their tiny little island level. What are the uh, you know expected sea level rises and storm soldiers from from storms, and and in order to raise their sea walls, um, so yeah, so th those are the kinds of things that, that that are happening out here to 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 prepare for 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 climate change. And I get it. I mean, it it is it is it is daunting, and and the thing is is there are things that we we can do, you know, and 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 we have to keep pushing to 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 have our governments and, and societies prepare for this because this is a reality yeah this is a big deal there's no question about it you know i want to ask you a question i think you're more prepared to answer this question than anybody else that i know my daughter wants to be an ambassador to a latin american country she is a freshman at rice university in houston top 10 university in the country she speaks fluent spanish she speaks fluent french and she's passionate about Latin American causes. So things like voting rights and, and things like that, right? Uh, how can she build an international career as a college student living in the United States? All right, kudos on your daughter and tell her the world needs her. <laughs> so please keep encouraging her to, to, to pursue that dream of having an international career. I would say, you know, I'm I'm Canadian, so I don't know how the Foreign Service works and, and what the tracks are for that in, in the US, but she needs to gain international experience for sure. I mean, she's already ahead of the curve with with her three languages. Yes. Um, and um and 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 she she can start by interning in international organizations, for instance, volunteering with NGOs, studying abroad, as as you were so rightly pointing out earlier. Mm -hmm. Um joining international student organizations. I don't know if, if Rice University has a model UN, for instance. You know, mm -hmm. those are things that 
do to go to conferences and start networking, start networking and building your, your international networks where you can. Really good advice. I like that. I think that's going to help a lot of college students who are listening. Um, you know, I also was curious about this because we have, you know, the holidays are coming right around the corner now. Christmas is going to be here in a couple of months and then New Year's Eve. These are holidays that are celebrated all over the world. How do other countries around the world ring in the holidays? So this is really interesting, actually, Michael, because, you know, Japan and Thailand are Buddhist countries. Right. And I, I remember back in, so, so 10 years ago, I was working in Japan and we work Christmas Day, right? Christmas, December 25th is, is like a work day. The big, the big, but yet they decorate the cities. <laughs> they're, they're, they're Christmas trees here in, in Bangkok. Yeah. It, Christmas trees are about to go up any minute, any minute, the city will be covered in Christmas trees. And, and so, I mean, they really do have fun with the, with, with the, the, the atmosphere of, of Christmas. And even I'm going to tell you, Japan has become a tourist destination, especially for, for tourists from Asia for Christmas lights. <laughs> so, Christmas so funny. lights? What? <laughs> I, you know, I, I often tell <laughs> my family, like, how did the Japanese sell the idea that they were a Christmas destiny, tourist destination? It's phenomenal, the ability of Japan to market. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, who would thought? In Japan? What? <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> And in Japan, the big thing is New Year. The big, big, big celebration is New Year. So you go to the temple at midnight and there are, I forget how many, they ring the, the bell and then you bow, you pray. Um, the, the Christmas day, you, you're you in the family. It's a family event. And you do, you use the bath, the bath, you know, Japan has a huge bath uh, culture, right? The bath is super important. And so people will go into in, in, and have a, a, a bath. And this is super interesting with Japan as well, is that, you, I mean, in the families, you use the same bath water. So in Japan, you you wash in the shower before going into it. The bathtub is not for for uh, washing and it's for soaking. So so you start off by being clean to start the new year, right? Mm -hmm. Start the new year clean. You eat soba. Soba are noodles, they're buckwheat noodles, and they are they are they bring good fortune. And because they're easily cut and you know, they you break with the the past year, you leave the past year behind, and so that's the tradition. Um so yeah, so those are some things that that, that other cultures do to bring in the new amazing, year. Amazing tradition. I don't know if I could get comfortable with sharing the same bath water with other people no. in my family. I don't know. That's that's a little too much for me, but <laughs> hey, who am I to decide what's right and what's wrong? All right. <laughs> All right. So I know you have these books. They're called the Globetrotter books. What would our college students learn by picking up some of these books? So I would love them to pick up my books. They're available on Amazon and 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 um and they're they're activity books. So they're fun, interactive books. Uh, so for younger, but but you'll learn so much from I learned so much from 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 writing them. Um, they, they're a fun way to explore the world without even leaving your dorm room. Um, you'll learn about different cultures, fascinating facts, and you'll just like. My aim with them is for you to like build wonder about the world and get excited and, and learn. It, they're a deep dive into culture, you know, customs, traditions. Uh, I have pages on politeness in, in, in the books I have made. Each one of them has a page on food. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I think that's great. I love the idea of the books. I think they're phenomenal. So um, really, really good. And, you know, we have to talk about food because this is what my whole existence is about. What am I going to eat next? And I love trying different foods from all over the world. I mean, I, I just love it. I want to try everything and not miss anything. Now, I don't know if I'm going to end up in Thailand. I hope so, because I love Thai food. So I hope one day I'll get there. But I think it's probably more likely that I'll be in Quebec at some point very soon. So the next time I land in Quebec, is there a place that I should go for a really good meal? Yeah, so in Quebec City, I mean, Quebec City is such a charming uh, old city. I, I, it's it's the first um, 
uh, mural city in, in North America. I think it has the oldest church in North America. It's really super charming city. So I highly encourage you to go to Quebec City. What yeah. you want to do is go to uh, a restaurant. Uh, if you want to see, first of all, the Chateau Frontenac. Chateau Frontenac is a, it's like a castle. It's really on, 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 you know, in the prominent spot of Quebec City with the massive, beautiful view of the St. Lawrence River. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then what you want to eat, you want to go to, for instance, if you're into fine dining, you want to go to uh, a restaurant, for instance, called Le saint Well, in Old Quebec City. Um, and you can you can eat dishes like venison and foie gras. Oh, and then for something sort of more um, uh, casual, another restaurant would be like La Bruche, where you can try authentic poutine. You've heard of poutine, uh, I'm of sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And tourtière, which is like meat pie. So those are suggestions for you. But call me, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through. Yeah, if you're in Quebec City, I'm going to call you so that way you can show me all the places to go because you know the city better than I do. Now, yeah, if you're I, ever in Nashville, Tennessee, and you want a good time in Nashville, then you can call me, and I'll I'll show you a good time in Nashville. But I don't know anything about Quebec City. Uh, <laughs> I highly highly recommend. It's beautiful. It really I is. Know. It's charming. It's charming, especially in February when it's minus 20. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I understand what that's all about. I went to school in Buffalo, New York, very close to the Canadian border. So oh, yeah. I, I know I know all about the cold weather and the snow. I, none of that really bothers me at all. So I'm okay with that. And uh, I can't wait to come and visit Quebec City. That would be a lot of fun. So, all right, really good. So if, uh, if our listeners, if they want to buy your Globetrotter books, maybe they want to get you to come and speak on their college campus about, uh, you know, just worldly travel and other things, where should they go to connect with you? Well, I have my website. It's uh, myglobetrotterbook.com. So please, please come and visit my website. I have a Facebook page. I I have an Instagram page. I'm on LinkedIn. So please, I'd love to. I, I My son's in second year university in Tokyo. I love college students. I love it. Myglobetrotterbook.com. Go and check out the website. Order the books. Learn some more. And what can I tell you, Marisha, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thanks for having me, Michael. I really enjoyed it. All right. My pleasure. And to our listening audience, if you enjoyed this conversation with Marisha, I want you to like it on social media and I want you to share it with other college students that need to learn more about what the world has to offer. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you on the next episode of the Paternity Foodie Podcast.